Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is going to be a quick one on how to create your own static website using S3. This is a follow up session for S3 theory and demo. We'll leave the links in the description below. Please take a look at them if you want to know more about S3 itself, like pricing, bucket creation, and related stuff. Now, before getting into the AWS console, I wanted to quickly mention about the difference between static and dynamic website. A static website is usually written in HTML using CSS and JavaScript, and the display content is same for everyone without any server-side processing or databases involved. On the other hand, dynamic website involves more user interaction and server-side processing with databases if required. And S3 supports only static websites. If you are looking to host dynamic website, then you could use services like EC2 or RDS for server-side processing and databases. With that being said, let's get into AWS console and start building our own simple website. So we are in the AWS console now under the S3 section. I'm using the listen to learn bucket, which we created as part of the previous session. Now let's see how to host the website using this bucket. The first step is to upload all the relevant files for our website into this bucket. So let's quickly do that. Click on upload and select the files that you want to upload. In this case, I just have three files, the index page, the second page and an error page. It's all HTML files. And once you added the selected files, you can upload them by simply clicking on upload. OK, we have uploaded the files now. The next step is to make your bucket public, which allows everyone to access your website. You can do this by three ways. One is by setting the permission for each object individually, which is time consuming, or set the permissions at the bucket level or even at the account level. Today, we are going to do it at the bucket level. First, we have to remove the block public access. For that, get into permissions and uncheck the block public access and save it. You have to confirm that. Now, if you take a look at the bucket access, it says objects can be public. However, they are not public yet. To make them public, we have to set the bucket policy. We are going to generate our own new bucket policy, which allows the objects within the bucket to be made public. So for that, you have to click on edit the bucket policy. And we are going to generate the bucket policy using a policy generator. So I'm going to select S3 bucket policy. And the effect is going to be allow as we are going to allow access. And the principle in this case is going to be star, which represents everyone. And the action is going to be get object. And the ARN is going to be the bucket ARN. So let's go back to the S3 console and grab the bucket ARN. Copy it and paste it back here. And this should be followed by a star representing all the objects within that particular bucket. And add the statement. Once the statement is added, you can go ahead and generate the policy. So the policy has a policy ID and a statement ID followed by the action. In our case, it's get object. And the effect is going to be allow and which allows all the objects within the bucket for all the users. So copy the policy, head back to the console and permissions and edit the bucket policy and paste the policy which we just created. Save the changes. Now if we look at the access, it is public. So we can go ahead and 
uh, create our own website so go to properties and there will be an option to enable static website hosting so right now notice that it is disabled so let's edit that and enable it so once you're trying to enable it you're going to have to specify the index and error documents for your website so in our case it's just index.html and error.html and once that is specified you can save the setting and if you notice there will be a URL generated for the static website and you can share this URL as a as your website's URL so if we click on this you can see that you can see the content of your website so this is the index page which has a link for the second page of our website so this is the second page so that's it we have our own website and if in case an error occurs say for example the second page is uh, deleted for some reason by mistake from your bucket then it displays the error page so let's do that quickly and see what happens so i'm deleting the second page here and once deleted let's go back to the website before that let's just check if the object is actually deleted let's go back to objects and see that the second page is removed so if we go back now and click on the click here thing then instead of getting into second page it redirects us to an error page so it's very simple hope you guys found it useful if there are any questions please leave them in the comments below we'll see you soon in the next video thank you